I'm Lisa, a postdoc in the Scalable Solvers group, and I'm happy to share my current research on multifrontal solver with low rank compression that I'm working on together with Sherry Lee, Peter Geisels, and Jan Liu. Multifrontal solvers are scalable solvers that are extremely important and widely accepted for many scientific and engineering applications. The method is aimed at large sparse linear systems that result from the discretization of partial differential equations. Multifrontal solvers have been used for many large-scale finite element applications, and here are a few examples, ranging from climate modeling that we can see to the top left, to some fusion examples on the right, like inertia confinement fusion or magnetic fusion, to electromagnetism, which includes the simulation of electrical motors that we can see on the bottom left. These are a few examples where multifrontal solvers are used. In this talk, I will focus in particular on multifrontal solvers with low rank compression to improve its computational efficiency. The method uses the low rankness, which is inherent in parts of matrices for many applications arising from wide classes of partial differential equations. Let me start with the basic idea of the multifrontal solver. The figure to the left represents a so-called nested dissection. We can think of all the dots as our data points that we receive from the matrix representation of the large sparse system. We use the nested dissection algorithm to reorder the system. At first, the graph is subdivided into two smaller subgraphs using the separator as zero that's highlighted in blue. From there, we separate again these two subgraphs into smaller subgraphs using separators that are highlighted in green. Then we separate again into smaller and smaller subgraphs. We use these separators to construct a so-called assembly tree that we can see on the right side. Each node of this assembly tree represents a so-called frontal matrix, which is a dense matrix. The idea of the multifrontal solver is now a bottom-up procedure of solving these smaller dense systems and passing the results along the tree until the root node. This is the general idea of the multifrontal solver. In this talk, I focus in particular on the multifrontal solver with low rank compression. That means some of these frontal matrices of the assembly tree will be compressed using a low rank compression. There's a visualization to the left that represents that higher in the tree where the matrices are usually larger, these matrices will be compressed, while lower in the tree, closer to the leaves, we will just keep the dense matrices because they are smaller, it doesn't pay off to compress them. Compression means that we will partition these frontal matrices into blocks and some of these blocks will be represented by a factorization, a factor of two or multiple matrices smaller matrices instead of keeping the entire block as a dense block. Why are we using multifrontal solver with low end compression? Because we can keep the robustness, ease of use and reliability of the multifrontal solver and then we can improve the performance by using this low end compression. Now we are wondering how does this low end compression look like and that's what I will explain next. To the left we see an example of a frontal matrix. The dark diagonal blocks mean that these blocks will be dense, while everything that's on the off diagonal can be low compressed. And we need to figure out with which criteria we decide on which block of these will be compressed. One example of how a low compression looks like is to the top right. We call this block B, and it can be low compressed by using the factors U and V, which are smaller matrices. So B is approximately U times V. And we need to figure out how we come up with u and v, of course. But this is how low compression might look like. Another thing we need to determine first is the partitioning. We need to partition the frontal matrix into blocks. And here we can use a hierarchical partitioning or a flat partitioning. And I will go into detail into this on the next slide with an example. But let's first look at the other requirements we have an admissibility condition. Here we can distinguish between a weak admissibility condition and a strong admissibility condition. The weak admissibility condition means that all off-diagonal blocks will be compressed, while the strong admissibility condition means that 
only the off-diagonal blocks that are truly compressible will be compressed. And then, of course, we need to find the, the computation of the lower rank compression. And these are all steps that we need to take into consideration. Let's look into a detailed example here to understand all these a little better. The two low rank formats that we will look into today are the block low rank format that we can see to the left and the HODLR, hierarchical of diagonal low rank format to the right. The block low rank format uses the so-called flat partitioning. That means we partition this matrix into clusters immediately. That's what we call flat, while the hierarchical partitioning that we can see for the hierarchical of diagonal low rank, HODLR, there we use a hierarchical partitioning. That means we use a hierarchy of, between the clusters. So first we separate the, the matrix into four blocks, two off diagonal blocks and two diagonal blocks. Then as is visualized here, the diagonal blocks are on the second level of our hierarchy are then separated again into four blocks. And then we separate these diagonal blocks again and so on and so forth. So this is one way of how we can use a hierarchical partitioning while for the block lowering format we use the flat partitioning which just immediately clusters this matrix into here 16 subblocks. And then another thing is the, here we can also need to distinguish between the admissibility condition for the block low rank condition we can either use a weak or a strong admissibility condition. What is represented here is the weak admissibility condition meaning all off diagonal blocks are compressed. But we could also and that's actually how we implemented it use the strong admissibility condition and that would mean that some of these off diagonal blocks will actually be dense blocks and not be compressed depending on the compressibility, if, it, if they are truly compressible. And then for the hierarchical off-diagonal lowering format, HODLR, we use a weak admissibility condition. And that's also what's visualized here. Each off-diagonal block is compressed. Okay, and now, of course, we need to figure out how do we come up with this low rank compression for all these blocks that actually will be compressed. We start with looking into some options that we have for the block low rank format, and then afterwards we will look into the low rank compression that we use for the HODLR format. Okay, let's start with BLR, block low rank. Here I have highlighted the choice that we actually have in our implementation, the column pivoted QR decomposition. But just so that we are all aware that there are other options, I would like to just shortly highlight the other options that we have. Let's start what we see to the left, the singular value decomposition. Here we factorize our matrix into three different smaller matrices. This method needs the entire matrix to come up with these factorizations. It's an optimal approach, which is the advantage, but it's expensive. This is a disadvantage. This is why we actually choose the column pivoted QR decomposition. Here again, we need the entire matrix to come up with this QR decomposition. It's less accurate than the singular value decomposition, but only slightly less accurate. So we can live with this because it's way cheaper than the singular value decomposition. And then there are other options out there like adaptive cross approximation or randomized algorithm. And here we only need to know that they are better in some way and also more challenging in other ways because there we don't actually need the entire matrix which is great for the computational complexity. However, it, because we don't use the entire matrix, um, depending on the approach we use here, um, the, it might be less robust. This is why we need to include a lot more consideration of the actual matrix, the input matrix, and so on. I don't want to go into detail here. These are actual approaches that we use for different lower ranks formats in our implementation. But what we need to know for this talk is that we use the column pivoted QR decomposition 
for the blocks of our block lowering compression. For HODLR, the hierarchical off-diagonal lowering format, we use the so-called butterfly decomposition as our compression method for the off-diagonal blocks of the frontal matrix. The butterfly decomposition is motivated by and serves as a good compression method for high-frequency problems. Let me highlight the main idea of the butterfly decomposition. The top figure visualizes the so-called complementary low rank property. Here a matrix of dimensions m times n is subdivided into submatrices, whose row and column dimensions multiply to the order n. Then the complementary low rank property states that the butterfly decomposition exists as if all of these submatrices are of low rank. Then, through recursive lowering factorization, the butterfly operator can be represented, as it's visualized here on the bottom, as the product of sparse matrices. This algorithm for the butterfly factorization is implemented by Yan Liu in the dense matrix package called Butterfly Pack. We use this within the HODLR format, hierarchical hierarchical off-diagonal low rank format, and we call it HODBF for hierarchical off-diagonal butterfly decomposition. And this is visualized here. All the off-diagonal blocks will be compressed using the butterfly decomposition. And this is implemented in the Strom pack package that's implemented by Peter Geisels. And here we use the butterfly package by Yang Liu. Let's look at some examples and results. What we see here is the viscoacoustic wave propagation, which is governed by the high-frequency 3D Helmholtz equation. We see the Helmholtz equation to the right and includes a bunch of parameters. And I will not go into detail here. The only thing we need to know is that we consider a homogeneous media. That means most of the parameters are constant. On the left side, we see a visualization of the solution of the Helmholtz equation, which is the pressure wave. So what we have visualized here is the real part of the pressure wave field. Another thing we need to know is that in general for highly oscillatory problems, they are really hard to solve with iterative solvers. And we will show here that the multifrontal solver actually does a really good job in solving these hard problems. And here we see some results. These are results showing the multifrontal solver the HODBF, hierarchical off-diagonal butterfly compression for the frontal matrices. And we use this as a preconditioner and follow this by, by a GMRES solver. So the result that we see here are the factorization time, the factorization flops in the middle plot and the factorization memory to the right, which is basically the multifrontal solver. And on the next slide, we will show the solve time and solve flops. So the problem sizes that we are looking at, which is the x-axis, ranging from 160 cubed to 280 cubed problem sizes. The multifrontal solver consists, as I said before, as the, can be described by the assembly tree and each front can be compressed or not, not compressed. Lower in the tree, where the, where the frontal matrices are smaller, we don't compress. While higher in the tree, with HODBF compression, we co will compress. And that means we look at what I indicated on the slide here, a separator size. So whenever a front corresponds to a separator size of 10,000 or higher, this will be compressed by HODBF. All other fronts stay dense. And the plots here, we see the blue line always shows us if we just use a multifrontal solver with no compression, while the purple line here indicates the multifrontal solver with HODBF. And what we see here is that we get really good results, especially for high problem sizes for the HODBF. So we have a problem size of 220 cube, then the HODBF uh, solver actually is faster. It has a faster factorization time and also the factorization flops and the memory is better. Better means here lower because we want less time and less factorization flops and less memory. So that looks really good here. And another parameter that we used here is the so-called compression tolerance, 
which is used inside the compression method as the parameter to decide on how accurate we compress here and that's 10 to the minus 3. That's of course a parameter that we can adjust but we stick to 10 to the minus 3 for this talk. Looking at the solved time and the solved flops we see that the solved time actually increased which is negative for the HODBF format and the solved flops per iteration are approximately the same as we can see here. That the solve time is slightly higher is actually not a problem because this is given in seconds the same as before for the factorization time this is also in seconds and we see the factorization time is in the hundreds of seconds while we talk about the solve time like just a couple of seconds so it doesn't influence a lot so in general the time together of factor and solve time is eight of a to dbf is way better than for non-compressing at all so that looks really good, already really promising. However, we know that we can even achieve a better factorization time and factorization flops. And this is why we want to conclude also the block low rank format, because it's known that this block low rank format can reduce the factorization flops. And this is what we see in this figure here. On the left, we see again a reminder what the block low rank format means. It's a flat partitioning and we use a strong admissibility condition. To the right, we see uh, uh, some results for the factorization flops. Again, we have considered the same problem sizes, and we can see that especially for smaller problems, the block lowering format does a better job because it's less factorization flops than HODBF. That gives us hope that if we can combine these both methods, uh, we can in general reduce the factorization flops and maybe also the factorization time. And this is what we do next. So we actually combine these methods. We will use the HODBF format for really large frontal matrices in our assembly tree, while the block lowering format we will use this for medium sized blocks. The really small frontal matrices will still be just dense matrices, so they will not be compressed at all. And that leads to this result that we can see here. Again, we have on the left side the factorization time, in the middle we have the factor flops, and to the right we see the factorization memory. And indeed, so the blue line again just shows us that if we don't compress at all, the purple line again shows us HODBF only, and the green line actually shows us this new hybrid version of HODBF hierarchical off-diagonal butterfly in comparison uh, with block lowering for medium-sized fronts. And we actually see better results here for the combination. The factorization time is better and also the factorization flops as we basically predicted already before. And even the factorization memory goes down. What exactly did we change here? So as I said, we included the block lowering format and in addition, we increase the separator size for HODBF. That means now all the frontal matrices that correspond to the separator size of 30,000 or more will be compressed by HODBF, while everything that's between 2,500 and this 30,000 will be compressed with block lowering and everything below that will be not compressed at all. And that looks really promising. And looking at the solved time and solved flops, there's um, again a slightly higher solve time, which is not a problem as I explained before, because it's again just measured in seconds and that's just a slightly increase compared especially to the factorization time, which is hundreds of seconds. And the solve plots uh, do not change a lot here, which is also good. That brings me to the conclusion that this new hybrid algorithm with the HODBF hierarchical off diagonal butterfly decomposition in combination with the block low rank shows a really, really promising results. However, we are still interested in improving this even more um, by doing some parameter studies and also improving this block low rank algorithm. Parameter studies means um, we still want to to play around with these uh, separator sizes. Right here we had just some fixed separator sizes, but maybe we can 
we can improve this algorithm even more if we change the separator size. So we have maybe even bigger HODBF matrices and more block lowering matrices, or we switch it the other way around to see what, uh, how we can improve this even more. And also I'm currently working on a new implementation for the block lowering algorithm, which is a so-called left looking alg algorithm, which uh, before we had a right looking algorithm. I don't want to go into detail here, but we have seen also some, some studies on this that it might be, might benefit our implementation, especially the parallel version of it. And this is what we're looking into so we can improve this in general even more with our general outlook is that we can improve especially the factor time and the factorization flops even more and with this i would like to conclude my talk and i'm happy to answer your questions